Hello. I will present vascularization and innervation of the upper limb. Neurovasculature of the upper limb. The upper limb is truly a complex part of the human body. In order to truly understand its structure, the anatomy of the upper limb is broken into compartments, such as regions, bones, joints, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. And we can see this image, blood vessels, nerves, muscles, and bones. This comp uh, compartmentalization helps to focus on the necessary details. Upper limb arteries. The main artery supplying blood to the upper limb is the subclavian artery. The trunk of the subclavian artery is continuous through the entire upper limb. During its pathway, the artery changes its name based on the region it supplies. Thus, the major named arteries of the upper limb are the subclavian artery, axillary artery, the brachial artery and the ulnar and radial arteries. Arteries of the shoulder. The main artery of the shoulder is the axillary artery. It originates from the subclavian artery at the lateral margin of the first rib and enters the shoulder region. The axillary artery supplies the content of the shoulder and the arm via its six branches that each or originate from the trunk of the artery in the following order. Its superior thoracic artery, thoracoacromial, lateral thoracic arteries, subscapular, anterior circumflex humeral, posterior circumflex humeral arteries. And we can see this image. Firstly, we have subclavian artery and it goes to axillary artery and we can see thoracoacromial artery its pectoral branch and its deltoid branch and we can see posterior circumflex humeral artery circumflex scapular artery subscapular artery anterior circumflex humeral artery and brachial artery. Arteries of the arm. The major artery of the arm is the brachial artery, which continues from the axillary artery at the lower margin of the teres major muscle. The brachial artery ends at the apex of the cubital fossa by giving off the forearm branch, the ulnar and radial arteries. The brachial artery supplies the content of the arm via its four branches, profunda brachy artery, nutrient artery to humerus, superior ulnar collateral artery, and inferior ulnar collateral artery. Arteries of the forearm. The forearm regions is literally full of muscles, with 20 of them laying within two compartments, all requiring a rich blood supply. The forearm region is thus supplied by two major vessels, the radial artery and ulnar artery. These arteries originate from the brachial artery at the apex of the cubital fossa, with the radial artery descending through the lateral part of the forearm and the ulnar artery through the medial part. Both arteries give off their main branches within the forearm with the radial artery giving the radial recurrent artery, palmar carpal branch, and superficial carpal branch, and the ulnar artery, giving the ulnar recurrent artery, muscular arteries, common interosseous artery, dorsal and palmar carpal arteries. And we can see this image. Brachial artery, and uh, it's uh, divided to radial artery and ulnar artery and uh, common interosseous artery we can see and anterior interosseous artery is here and posterior interosseous artery is here and we can see also these uh, arteries 
It's on the interosseous membrane. Arteries of the hand, the radial and ulnar arteries, both and it uh, and in the hand, anastomosing with each other. The radial artery mainly supplies the thumb and the lateral side of the index finger, while the ulnar artery supplies the medial side of the index finger and the rest of the fingers. These two arteries form two anastomotic arches in the palm, called the superficial palmar arch and deep palmar arch, from which minor arteries to the muscles, digits, and joints of the hand originate. And we can see this is superficial palmar arch, this is deep palmar arch, and superficial palmar arch, it's, uh, it has radial artery and ulnar artery, it goes and uh, creates it. And common palmar digital arteries here, and digital arteries to the thumb here, radial artery of index finger, and proper palmar digital arteries here. Upper limb veins. The hand has two venous networks that drain it. There are deep veins which accompany the arteries and superficial veins, which anastomose into a dorsal venous network. This superficial network is located at the dorsum of the hand. The basilic vein originates from the medial side of the dorsal venous network, while the cephalic vein originates from the lateral side. The two mentioned veins, basilic and cephalic, are the main veins of the forearm. They are superficially located with basilic traveling through the ulnar and cephalic traveling through the radial side of the forearm. Besides these two, the, main, the median forearm vein assists in draining the forearm. It travels through the middle of the forearm. All three veins of the forearm tribute to the brachial veins. The veins that drain the arm are the paired brachial veins. The brachial veins are deep veins that are uh, po positioned like some kind of bodyguards around the brachial artery. One travels along its medial side and the other along the lateral. Their trib uh, tributaries are the veins of the forearm and the veins that accompany the branch of the brachial artery. All of them together trib tribute to the axillary vein. The main vein of the shoulder is the axillary vein which conveys blood from the shoulder and arm. It begins at the lower margin of the teres major muscle, formed from the basilic vein and later the cephalic vein, gathering tributaries within the shoulders. It ultimately becomes the subclavian vein at the lateral border of the first rib. And I have uh, two image, we can see also right uh, subclavian vein is here and brachiocephalic vein this is and uh, it goes to axillary vein like uh, artery and uh, this is brachial vein, this is cephalic vein, it's really long vein, this is basilic vein and medial, median cubital vein, this is very important for uh, us. And this is a median antebrachial vein, this is basilic vein, ulnar vein, and radial vein. And we can see the hand, deep palmar venous arch, and superficial palmar venous arch. And we can see also the digital veins. Nerves of the upper limb. The, the upper limb is supplied by a nerve network called the brachial plexus. 
This plexus is made by the merging of the anterior rami from the lower four cervical nerves and the first thoracic nerve. The plexus is anatomically divided into roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and finally the terminal branch. Terminal branches of the brachial plexus are the musculocutaneous nerve, the axillary nerve, the median nerve, the radial nerve, and the ulnar nerve. And the musculocutaneous nerve innervates the anterior comp uh, compartment of the arm, including the skin of the lateral side of the forearm. The axillary, vein, axillary nerve innervates the deltoid long head of the triceps brachii and teres minor muscle, provides sensory innervation for the shoulder, joint, and the skin covering region of the deltoid muscle. The median nerve innervates the anterior, anterior compartment of the forearm, the tenar eminence, lateral lumbaricus, and the skin of the lateral hand. The radial nerve innervates the posterior compartments of the arm and forearm, skin of posterior arm, forearm and dorsal lateral part of the hand. The ulnar nerve innervates the flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. The hypotenar uh, eminence medial lumbricals, dorsal and palmar interosi, adductor pollicis, and the skin of the medial hand. And also we can see, this is dorsal scapular nerve, muscular branch of the brachial plexus, suprascapular nerve, subclavian nerve, long thoracic nerve, first intercostal nerve, and second intercostal nerve. And we can see also ulnar nerve and median nerve, radial nerve. We can see medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve, medial brachial cutaneous nerve, and medial pectoral nerve. And this is ansa pectoralis. This is superior subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, inferior subscapular nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, and we can see axillary nerve. And also we can uh, clearly see here, um, this is musculocutaneous nerve again, radial nerve, median nerve, ulnar nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, thoracodorsal nerve, thoracodorsal, sorry, uh, lower subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, and long thoracic nerve, it's here. Lymphatic system. The lymphatic system functions to drain tissue fluid, plasma proteins, and other cellular debris back into the bloodstream and is also involved in immune defense. Once this collection of substance in, enters the lymphatic vessels, it is known as lymph. It's subsequently filtered by lymph nodes from which it returns to the circulation via the venous system. Superficial lymphatic vessels. The superficial lymphatic vessels of the upper limb initially arise from the lymphatic plexus in the skin of the hand. These vessels then travel up the arm in close proximately to the major superficial veins. The vessels shadowing the basilic vein go on to enter the cubital lymph nodes. These are found medially to the vein and proximally to the medial epicondyle of the humerus. 
Vessels carrying on from this nose then continue up the arm, terminating in the lateral axillary lymph nodes. The vessels shadowing the cephalic vein generally cross the proximal part of the arm and shoulder to enter the apical axillary lymph nodes. Two of the some exceptions instead enter the more superficial deltopectoral lymph, lymph nodes. Deep lymphatic vessels. The deep lymphatic vessels of the upper limb follow the major deep veins, radial, ulnar, and brachial veins, terminating in the humeral axillary lymph nodes. They function to drain lymph from the joint capsules. Perosteum, tendons, and muscles. Some additional lymph nodes may be found along the ascending path of the deep vessels. And we can see, this is dorsal lymphatics. Cubital nodes, it's here. Supra, it's medial group. Axillary. Central group. Infraclavicular group. Delta pact and humeral nodes. Lymph nodes. The majority of the upper extremity lymph nodes are in the axilla. They can be divided anatomically into five groups, pectoral, subscapular, humeral, central, and apical. Pectoral is three five nodes located in the medial wall of the axilla. They receive lymph primarily from the anterior thoracic wall, including most of the breast. Subscapular, Six seven nodes located along the posterior axillary fold and subscapular blood vessels. They receive lymph from the posterior thoracic wall and scapular region. Humeral, four six nodes located in the lateral wall of the axilla, posterior to the axillary vein. They receive most of the lymph drained from the upper limb. Central, Three, four large nodes located near the base of the axilla. They receive lymph via efferent vessels from the pectoral, subscapular, and humeral axillary lymph node groups. An apical located in the apex of the axilla, close the axillary vein and, it, uh, and first part of the axillary artery. They receive lymph from the efferent vessels of the central axillary lymph nodes, therefore from all axillary lymph node groups. The apical axillary nodes also receive lymph from those lymphatic vessels accompany, uh, accompanying the cephalic vein. And let's see these nodes. Uh, I can start the apical nodes it's highlighted in yellow and this is lateral nodes central nodes posterior nodes and this is highlighted in purple it's pectoral nodes and thank you